Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the best coast. That is not the west coast, not the east coast, but rather the third coast, the Windy City. City of Big Shoulders, Sky City, or simply Chicago, whatever you want to call it, this video is going to cover the most significant pros and cons of living in this awesome city. I have lived in Chicagoland area since I was a little baby when I flew here with my family. After the fall of the Soviet Union from Poland, uh, we got lucky, we got the green card lottery and made our way over here as soon as we could. Since that time, I've enjoyed living in this city, but have also noticed things about living here that are not so favorable. I've also during that time been helping people like yourself find places to live and work in the Chicagoland area since I was a teenager helping my father in his real estate broker's practice. Uh, and now I am on my own as a real estate attorney, estate planning attorney, and of course broker with EXP. So stay tuned. We're going to cover the top 10 pros and cons of living in Chicagoland, that is Chicago and its surrounding suburbs. However, if at any point you need uh, to reach out to me and get a jump start in navigating the market, please do so re using the contact information in the description below, or you can text, call, email me, or use the link in the description to set up a Zoom call. Now let's get into it. First, we're gonna start off with the cons. Chicago has some of the shortest yellow light times in the country, as well as the largest number of red light cameras here. Uh, this was a point of controversy, I think, back in 2014. I was looking this up. Um, in fact, the Chicago Tribune got into it, and they were trying to figure out, like, oh, well, all these new red light cameras put in, you know, are the, the yellow light times a bit too short? Are they doing this on purpose to make money off of Chicago residents? Well, based on some standard equations that transport engineers use, it would seem that, in fact, yeah, Chicago red or yellow light times based on those equations were just a bit shorter than everybody else's around the country. Um, so just driving around, hey, be be aware of all the red light cameras, you know, use something like Waze and other programs that'll let you know about the red light cameras uh, so you can avoid getting a ticket. Con number two, there is generally a high cost of living on the day-to-day -day stuff here in Chicago. Cost of living here is high, pretty much on par with most major metropolitan uh, cities. Um, for example, I think it would be a little bit cheaper living here than in New York, but more expensive in, than in Atlanta, in my experience. Um, be just prepared to pay more for things like gas, um, your cocktails, your entertainment, for example, um, especially as you get closer to the city. Overall, this is likely going to be the most expensive place to live in the Midwest. Um, con number three, there's limited parking in the city. The parking here is l either bad, expensive, or unavailable. If you have a car, I would re recommend not parking it on the street. Um, you're going to see your bumpers get scuffed up from all that parallel parking after a while. Um, you know, it's a good idea to get a garage, however, it can be expensive, especially uh, the closer you get to downtown. Um, the best solution, I think, is to get a condo if you're going to be living in the city that has parking available, either included in, in, in the purchase price or available at a cost to the condo association that manages those those parking spots usually those spots are going to be much much cheaper than the public rate around you number four the winters are harsher so be prepared city is also used to it so be prepared to you know just kind of deal with it when we do have storms come through so if you're out of town do not expect the city to shut down over an inch of snow or even one or two feet of snow in fact there have been many cases where i've had to you know get to where i needed to get anyway even though bus routes were shut down and so on City has a good fleet of snow plowing trucks to clear the roads and salt them. However, keep in mind that salt will eat away at your car. Make sure to, you know, get your undercarriage blasted, um, clean that is from time to time in the winter, or go and get some kind of undercarriage coating done uh, before the winter season starts. However, which is great, gives you an opportunity to, to get out there, go sledding, you know, snowball fights, building snowmen, you know, all your favorite winter activities. You can head up north to go skiing, snowboarding, Michigan, Wisconsin are good areas for that. Um, and then also it's really pretty in the city when it snows, um, you know, even on, on the beaches, which is really interesting to see when all those areas freeze over. There is something really charming about the city, despite the brutality of the cold. Uh, con number five, the crappy roads here. Um, and those roads get worse because of the changing seasons, especially in Chicago, where it seems like we go through every single season in a week. You know, the snow will fall, it will melt, it'll get into the cracks on the roads, then it'll freeze again, expand, making those cracks bigger, causing huge potholes. And then when there's snow coverage, you know, you never know what's underneath that snow when you're driving. So you may hit a big pothole and then, you know, it's a bad t day for you. So just be careful. Maybe get a skid plate, protect your oil pan, or, or just be careful driving around in the wintertime. Con number six, public transportation is available, but it has a tendency to become 
when crowded, especially when you need it. So that is when going to work, leaving work. And then on game days, keep in mind, game days are going to really cause the public transit system to um, get crowded. Con number seven, traffic can be dreadful at times in Chicago. We have a great you know, express and, and, and roadway here, but if uh, when it comes down to it, you know, rush hour can, can start at like four o'clock and go on to like 7.30 or later, which, you know, is it's kind of annoying. I, you know, I would stay in the office a little bit later, try to avoid traffic. So just, you know, time your time your journeys if you can. Living in Chicagoland can be very expensive uh, from the city to the suburbs, depending on where you are going to look. You'll see some areas that have a premium price attributed to them. For example, in the Loop, which is the city center, the median price for a two bedroom condo is about $420,000. And that has been steadily rising over the last three years. A two bedroom condo uh, in a nearby community area, one of 77 Chicago designated community areas, this one being called the near west side, a two bedroom condo will go for $407,000, which is a little bit cheaper, uh, but still pretty high. And then a two bedroom detached home, which is really uncommon in the city will go for about $1 million in this area. If you want to know more about this specific area, I recommend you check out the neighborhood open house video I did on the near west side, uh, which covers the near west side and specifically Little Italy, which is one of the neighborhoods located in that community area. And also check out my video um, for what I consider to be the hottest neighborhoods for 2023, as far as the real estate market goes and the amount of action those areas are going to get. Uh, with respect to the suburbs, a popular suburb like Park Ridge in the northwest suburbs, a single family three bedroom home, which is a common item that people would be looking for in that area, will run you about $485,000. However, a two bedroom condo in that area will run you about $290,000. Um, so significantly cheaper. Um, there are more expensive suburbs though, for example, Highland Park, which to give you some context is where um, in Ferris Bueller's day off, Cameron Fye lived at his mansion and uh, where that uh, Ferrari of his father was stored. In that area, a th three bedroom home, for example, um, detached home will go for about $1.5 million. The Ferris Bueller house that I mentioned actually did sell most recently in 2016 for about a million dollars after sitting on the market for uh, maybe even nine years, I believe. I think it was from 2009 to 2016. So about seven years it was sitting and finally sold for a million. Right now in Highland Park, Michael Jordan's house is for sale for just short of 14, or just short of $15 million if you're in the market for something like that. Hey, let me know. Uh, so depending on when you look, where you look, prices can vary greatly. It's important that you have a good realtor on your side, maybe somebody like hmm, myself to help you laser focus your search so we can look in the areas that you want to look while keeping in mind your budget and all the amenities that you want your home to have. Otherwise, you'll find you get frustrated pretty quickly when you can't find what you're looking for. Uh, so again, use the description information to reach out to me. Con number nine, Chicago has a high level of pollen and air pollution. This is most apparent in uh, the spring and early summer. Um, reason is, well, you get all that pollen coming in from the spring and all the trees turning green again, but also the snow melts that was previously um, holding all of that pollution and, and turned kind of that black color um, from all the exhaust, car exhaust and stuff. And then once that, that melts, it releases all that back into the air. And so the air is dirtiest around that time. You know, I'm not particularly sensitive to it, but something that maybe if you're moving to Chicago and have a high sensitivity to allergens, something to consider. And our final con, people here are not the friendliest, not to say that they're not friendly. It's just like when I had moved to the South, I was surprised with so many people stopping on the street to say hello to me. I was like, oh, well, you know, what are you selling? But in, in Chicago, it's just not common. People are just kind of in their own world. They, they like their space, they're quiet. They, you know, they just give you your space and kind of try to stay out of the way. However, you know, if you were to say hi to them, people would be friendly. So don't feel discouraged if in Chicago you're moving here and it turns out that you may be the first person to say hi in a conversation. Don't be discouraged just because you have to do that. There's plenty of friendly people and communities around here to make friends in. I don't think about you at all. So now on to our pros. The first pro of living in Chicago is its cultural diversity and the rich history of the city. Um, all that diversity and history is really engraved into the city cityscape, the neighborhoods, the streets, the roads, the buildings around here. 
And uh, because, you know, Chicago is this, you know, great industrial powerhouse um, and all the immigrant cultures it has attracted throughout the, the decades um, have left their imprint on the city. So really, you can get through, you can travel the world traveling Chicago. So if you want to, you know, check out either of the Chinatowns, either of the little Italy's little India or Pakistan, depending on who you ask, little Vietnam, Greek town, Ukrainian village, or any of the other neighborhoods in Chicago, there's always something new to experience and learn about. Gives you access to all sorts of foods, music, culture, uh, you know, festivals, entertainment, activities, and so on. Pro number two, Chicago does have an excellent food scene and that's on all levels. So whether you're looking to find a memorable place to eat and spend only five to 10 bucks a plate or, you know, uh, 150 or more a plate, you can do that here. And the restaurant scene is supported by that rich immigrant culture that I mentioned before. So you always have a multiple uh, or, you know, a multitude of choices to make as far as food options go. And make sure to check out my neighborhood open house videos where I'd like to go and check out at least two of these um, food places in any neighborhood that I that I see to, to show off what good eats there are in that particular area. Um, number three pro, there's never a shortage of things to do in Chicago. Um, you know, the entertainment options here are in the branding. Residents have the option here to check out any number of concerts that are going on a day uh, from small venues local, uh, supporting small local acts to, to big performances at the Lyric Opera House, a Chicago Jazz Festival, Lollapalooza, for example. Chicagoans, uh, I'd say, are well accommodated no matter what their tastes are. Likewise, if you're a big sports fan, you know, you have the Chicago Bulls, Bears, Blackhawks, uh, Cubs, Sox to choose from and support. Um, and it seems there's always games going on. One of my fondest memories is, is not even of a local game, but an international game of a soccer game between Poland and Mexico. That was really cool. Brought out, you know, two of the largest immigrant populations here in Chicago together for some healthy rivalry. And it was actually a lot of fun, um, you know, getting involved in that when I was a kid. Pro number four, the city does have multiple multiple festivals throughout the year. I did mention some of them, but I want to list them out because I think that's significant. As far as music goes, you know, you have Lollapalooza, which I think is the most accessible festival. I think uh, almost everybody will find something that they like on the lineup there. You have North Coast for electronic music and hip hop. You have Riot Fest for your punk rock um, guys and, and, and girls and, and metalheads. Um, cultural festivals you have is is also plentiful. You have Chicago Jazz Festival, which celebrates the jazz roots of Chicago, Chinese New Year parades, Polish Independence Day, Taste of Chicago, St. Patrick's Day Parade, where we dye the river green, um, many other local neighborhood um, festivals for you to check out. And then there's also the Chicago Open House, which I think is super cool. Citywide architectural tour. A lot of the buildings in Chicago that are usually not open to the public open up their doors so people can learn about the historical relevance of those um, buildings and, and locations within those buildings. The Zoo Lights at Chicago, the Chicago Auto Show, which is one of the oldest auto shows in the year, going for over uh, 100 years now. Chicago Theater Week and Broadway. Uh, Chicago Comic Con, our comic and entertainment expo. You know, you can get dressed up and do the, your whole Comic Con thing. Chicago Air and Water Show, you know, legendary stuff. There's so much to do here. Many, many notable worldwide known festivals to check out here. If you're curious about a particular area of Chicago, please reach out to me and I'm happy to point you in the right direction as far as what the big next festival is uh, in that area for you to go and see. Pro number five is access to Lake Michigan. I think people here are always taken a bit aback when I mention, hey, Chicago has miles of beaches. Um, and that is true, stemming from downtown area all the way up north where I live, you'll see miles of beaches going even, even past um, Chicago to the north suburbs. So no matter where you are in the city, really, you can find a good beach within walking distance. And if that particular beach is crowded that day, you can walk north or south a short while just to find yourself a spot. Um, really easy to find, uh, you know, a non-crowded area or a more crowded area, depending on what kind of vibe you're going on that beach day. Um, like I said, the beaches extend north into the north suburbs. I think some of the best beaches are over there. But, you know, you have options to go biking, running, tanning or finding somewhere to play beach volleyball. Um, you can do that in Chicago pretty easily. Um, additionally, uh, boating is really popular here. See plenty of boats around. I got my sailing license in Poland. And when I got my license, I came back down here and trained with the Chicago uh, Columbia uh, Yacht Club race team for a while. And, you know, boating on Lake Michigan is also great. And it gets so hot in the summer. I mean, getting out in the water is awesome. So I highly recommend that activity. 
Number six, the music scene here is vibrant. There's a lot of local acts to follow and enjoy. It has a strong electronic music scene. Chicago is the home of house music. There's a lot of DJs around here that got their start. Um, big industrial um, music uh, scene here. Wax Tracks comes to mind. Uh, you know, a few punk rock bands that come out of here. Um, rock bands generally, hip hop groups and, and artists. I mean, I could talk about this forever, so just sit me down whenever you want. I'll tell you everything I know, but I could talk for hours, honestly. So if you're into, you know, really anything, you can you can likely find a, a band here to follow or or a venue that that hosts that type of music. Pro number seven, access to internationally renowned uh, museums and parks here in Chicago. Chicago is home to the Chicago Art Museum, Chicago Museum of Contemporary Art, um, Institute of Science and Technology, Chicago Planetarium, Chicago Aquarium. Field Museum, Chicago Botanical Gardens, the Volo Auto Museum, as well as many other art museums and, and local local neighborhood museums uh, throughout Chicago's many community areas. There's a lot to see here. Uh, pro number eight, you have access to great shopping. You know, this is home of Magnificent, Magnificent Mile, which is renowned for its shopping worldwide. You'll have, you know, the flagship store at Burberry here, Ralph Lauren's largest store is here. Um, Gucci's here, Louis Vuitton's here, um, lots of great, great stores here to go and check out. Uh, this is Ooh. some sport thing, I don't know. You keep it easy. This is... What is that? Insulate, I don't know. Come on. Um, and likewise, residents have access to Woodfield Mall, which was the largest mall in America in the 70s. Still a very big mall and popular spot, and that is 30 minutes out in Schaumburg. If you kind of want to go and check out a mall, uh, old school style, but there's many malls in the city as well. Um, pro number nine, Chicago is a very walkable city. So it has a great system of bus routes. It's a gridded city, so it's easy to follow those bus routes. Either we're going this way or this way. Really easy to understand those routes. Uh, CTA line, really easy as well. You have the Metro line, will get you out to the rest of the state and the suburbs. And then the suburbs has its own pace system, bus system as well. Uh, Chicago is also well supported um, by a bike lane system and a rental bike system as well as electronic scooter systems you can get around the city that way uh, and then a bonus is that you're right next to o'hare international airport which is the largest international airport airport here in the united states which will take you everywhere and take you back to chicago easy from anywhere and uh, likewise you have midway airport down south side of the city i mean really there's never a shortage of flights is, is the whole point okay so pro number 10 Despite the high cost of living of, of living in Chicago, I'd say it's still cheaper than the other major metropolitan options in the United States, that being LA and, and New York City. This is true in terms of property cost, as well as the general cost of living. Furthermore, I think Chicago is a more adequately sized city compared to these others, whereas New York seems to go on forever and ever, kind of overwhelming, and LA is super spaced out with no central centrality around it, like central point around it. And Atlanta, in my opinion, was too small. I think Chicago has a great balance of that big city feel um, with all the amenities that come with it without it being too overwhelming so you can kind of get away from it if you need to. Um, so Chicago has, I think, that perfect size. Where it's not underwhelming and it's not overwhelming. And that's just right. So if you're looking to buy, sell, rent real estate in Chicago, the Chicagoland area that is Chicago and its nearby suburbs, please feel free to contact me using the information in the description below. You can call, text me, email me, use the link in the description to set up a Zoom zoom call with me where i can show you some charts and we can go over your neighborhood value report buyer questionnaire whatever you might need from me we can go and share documents one-on-one -on -one, uh kind of nice and then um just contact me for more information because that's what it's all about setting up a proper search and searching in the right areas so you can get your dream home and uh market your home correctly as far as getting top dollar for your home goes in the chicagoland area we'll get you on an orientation call so whether you're buying or selling or renting will help you make the best decision for you and your family given your current circumstances uh, so i hope you guys found this video useful um thank you again to all my subscribers if you have not subscribed please consider doing so uh you know smash that like button and smash that subscribe button hit that bell button you know get on my instagram and facebook pages hit, hit like on that too follow those comment on all my stuff tell me how awesome this is tell me how much you're loving it or tell me how much i'm missing the point i mean I, everything kind of helps the algorithm so you know, just help me out, guys. Hit that, hit that subscribe button for real. Anyway, so I post daily tips on how to help uh, you and your family make the right choice as far as real estate investment goes, securing that asset and estate planning, making that purchase in the first place or closing and doing the title work. So if you guys have any questions on property, I am here to help you. 
Thanks so much for watching this video and make sure to check out my other videos uh, on how to buy and search for a home in the Chicagoland area, which is uh, linked just right up here. Uh, so make sure to check that out and please reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks so much. And until next time, see you.